There's a big puzzle about the ending of Mark. As we have it in the oldest manuscripts that we've got of the original Greek New Testament, the thing breaks off at chapter 16, verse 8, when Mark says that the women said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. That's pretty abrupt, and it's even more abrupt in the Greek, which just ends ephobuntoga, for they were afraid, which is a very odd way in Greek to end a sentence. So many people have guessed, and I think this is right, that there was originally a longer ending to Mark, and that either because it was a scroll and and the stick that's attached to the end of the scroll got torn off, taking some of the end of the gospel with it, or because it was a very early stitched book and the last leaf got torn off for one or another reason or something like that, we are actually missing the end which Mark originally wrote or intended to write, or perhaps he didn't even finish it. Perhaps um, he was whisked off to prison, who knows, before he'd actually written the last bit. But it seems to me pretty clear that he didn't intend it to end at chapter 16, verse 8. What then happened is that later, in some much later manuscripts than the earliest ones we've got, there are two different conclusions which look as though different scribes at some point have scratched their heads and said, we can't leave it like that we must put something in. So the endings, which are uh, in verses 9 through to 20 in most printed Bibles now, are probably the attempts by other people later on, on the basis of the other Gospels, to fill in some of the details. However we do that, it still, of course, is the most extraordinary story. Easter is not simply as the world sees it, a happy ending after this rather sad account. And sadly, that's how often the church keeps Easter. We go through Holy Week very penitential and all dark and serious, and then we have one day when we sing happy hymns, and then we all go on holiday. And that's just not good enough. Easter is this amazing, mysterious, new thing. Something is happening. We have not been this way before. That's the feeling we should get. The angel says to the women, you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's been raised. He isn't here. And again and again, we need to hear in the church, he isn't here. He's been raised. He's going before you. He's leading us out into doing new things. That's what they had to hear. And that's often what we have to hear today as well. And so Easter is a time for us to go home and ponder, what does this mean? If it makes us afraid, maybe that's a good thing. If it doesn't make us afraid, is that because we've made Easter a bit too cosy, a bit too comfortable? Resurrection isn't about simply a new spirituality. Jesus is alive, therefore we can get to know him. That's true, but that's not the heart of Easter. Resurrection isn't even about Jesus is alive, therefore his death really did forgive us our sins. That is true. That is central. It's important. But it's by no means the whole truth. The whole truth is that Jesus is alive and with him a whole new world, a new creation has come into being. And we, like those frightened women on that first day, or like the others who we read about a little bit later, we have to learn not to be afraid. Just because we don't know where God is now leading us doesn't mean that the new world hasn't begun. No, with Easter it has begun. And in the power of the Spirit, which is then fairly soon promised, we are to be people who go out and make the Easter Jesus real in his world against the day when one day the renewal of all things will take place and we will share with him in our own resurrection.